All right, and let's go ahead and start uh, the grade six transition uh, presentation. I'll tell you a little bit about um, our agenda today. We're going to talk about some important information about junior high. Uh, talk about parent and student expectations for next year. Uh, assessment expectations and course selection for next year. So it's an exciting transition for you. We just want to share as much information as we can. First of all, as you know, when you go from grade six to grade seven, the expectations in your course courses will change. And pretty exciting, you're now given an option to choose your options courses. Uh, this will happen, course selection will happen uh, tomorrow, which is Monday, May 3rd. So we want to give you some information about those options today. So here are some parent uh, expectations, things that your parents might want to be aware of. Uh, once you, tra once uh, you transition into grade seven, uh, you'll have one homeroom teacher. It can be a confusing time. So uh, we're encouraging your parents to be vigilant, but patient with, uh, with all of you at the beginning of this term as you settle into a new phase of learning. Also, your parents will need to take a more active role to ensure that uh, they are reaching out to the teachers, uh, as well as you also reaching out to see if they're struggling or unsure of anything. And also, um, to keep in touch with the homeroom teacher to make sure that there are uh, all that general information is shared. More ec uh, parent expectations. Parents need to ensure that their child has access to all the different accounts in the first week of school and to reach out for support to the homeroom teacher if there are any issues. This could be with passwords or login information. Parents will also need to be aware of school policies as they are a little bit different uh, for the junior high group. There is also a lot more responsibility on the student for their learning, their behavior and their work ethic. And this is um, there is a different parents uh, evening in junior high as you'll need to know more, um, meet, meet more than one teacher. So be aware of this when booking appointments with teachers. And of course, re keeping in mind that we are here as teachers to help and together we will be the village that raises the child. Okay, now for student expectations. Moving into grade seven can be a bit challenging this is the first time you will not have the same teacher for most of your lessons. You will have a homeroom teacher, so make sure that any concerns or issues uh, or support that you need uh, can go to that teacher. The teachers are there to help you and they understand that it is all new and it will take a little time to adjust. You will need to be extra prepared for your classes and use your diaries as much as possible. This will help you get to know your teachers and your classes and the class times and of course the homework assignments. And there will be extra responsibility for all of you to take initiative for reaching out to teachers and taking notes in class. It's a little scary, but it's also really exciting and it is always fun. Okay, you will have a different teacher for every topic and they will need to be emailed or messaged on teams about the questions for their subject. You will be going to different rooms and you'll need to be aware to take all of your things with you for each lesson as another class will be in there. The work may seem a little harder, but it will be the next step, next step up in the outcomes and your, learn, your teachers will be leading you for the next grade level expectations. Speak up at the beginning if you find this confusing. Don't wait until later on. That's really important to be accountable for your learning. And keep in mind that the teachers care about you. So go to them if you need support. Uh, don't, don't be shy in that regard. 
Also, what will change is the way that you come to school and leave the school will be different, and that will all be explained at the beginning of the year. There's a, there's a behavior policy and a student handbook because the expectations for junior high are a little different. Okay, I'm gonna stop there for a moment. Are there any questions or comments from any students so far? Um, what are student diaries or student handbook? Because that part kind of confuses me. Ah, yeah, good question. Um, it's like the agenda. So keeping your diary journal agenda to track uh, due dates and when assignments um, are given and, and uh, how much time you have to work on them. That's the diary. Now Thank the you. student the student handbook is uh, a, uh, it's, it's usually posted on the school website. And it'll also be given to you uh, in, a, in a digital version. And uh, that's just a list of the rules, the expectations, what to do if you're late, what to do if you're sick, um, all of that, uh, all the policies around uh, cell phone usage, that's all in the student handbook. Okay, great question. Any other questions so far? Yes, homework. Yes, homework? No, not homework. I'm just remembering the question. Oh, okay. <laughs> Any other questions? Miss, I have a question. Yeah. Um, so are we going to be going to the school when we're in grade seven or are we going to be doing it online? <laughs> yeah, that's a really good question. Uh, we are all hoping that you guys will be in school. Inshallah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> all right. Let's let's uh, talk a little bit about assessment. Sorry, well, hold on one second, Joelle. It looks like you have a question. Sorry, I forgot to put my hand down. That's all right. Okay, junior high is graded on the one to four grading scale, which is the same system as grade six. You will be expected to write quizzes, write tests and quizzes, uh, a midterm test, which is, um, which is halfway through, and a final exam in each of your core courses. So the core courses are the main courses that uh, you don't have a choice in taking. So we'll call those the core courses. And you may be given homework in your classes that you will be expected to hand in on time. Any questions about that part? Yes, um, how many core courses are we going to have? Sorry, can you speak a little louder? I can't quite hear you. How many core courses are we going to have? Oh, yes, I will show you those. So each student will take five mandatory year long courses. Those are the core courses. And and then you have the choice of taking four different options courses throughout the year. And then two of those options courses are taken in the first semester, which is uh, the first half of the year. And the other two options courses will be taken in the second semester or the second half of the year. OK, so the, what are those core courses or these mandatory year long courses? Well, there's English language arts, social studies, science, math and health and physical education. Okay, those are the five core courses and you'll be taking that, those courses throughout the entire year. Just to add a little note in there, Miss Thomas, uh, that I just noticed we forgot to add in. Uh, if you are currently taking Arabic and Islamic as a mandatory course, you will continue to take Arabic and Islamic as a mandatory course. If you are currently in French, you will continue to be in French next year as well. Okay, any questions so far? I have a question. I have a question. Yeah, okay, go ahead. 
Um, what does mandatory mean? Oh yeah, good question. Mandatory means it's not a choice. Uh, you have to you have to take it. It's not oh. an option. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good question. Um, and are we allowed to do the same option course two times semester, like two times? Um, that's a good question. Hi, great. <laughs> Um, no, you're going to take four different options. So you'll take two in the first term and then two different ones in the second term. Oh. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right, so what are those uh, options courses that you get to choose from? Well, we have drama, music, art, media design and communications, which is MDC, Arabic as a second language, French as a second language, foods, business, and sports performance. And I know you probably have a lot of questions about those and what they what they are about. Uh, so that information, Miss um, Sophia and Mr. Um, Kaylee will be telling you a little bit more about. All right, so I'll wrap up my part and then I'll pass it over. So you want to choose a class that you think you will enjoy. Uh, could it be maybe a future career? That might be something to consider. The date for options class course selection is tomorrow, Monday, May 3rd at 1230. You will log into Teams as usual. And we will guide you through the online site, which is called PowerSchool. We'll be using PowerSchool uh, to choose your options courses. You will need the following information. You'll need to have your Alberta student number, which is listed at the top of your report card. So if you have a report card handy, that would be great. And you also need your Qatari ID number. So if you can have your ID card from your, your parents handy, that would be great as well. And of course, you want your list of four options courses ready. So just to wrap up, remember have the following information ready for May 3rd at 12.30 p.m. and ask your parents for help if you need it uh, to have that, that information ready. Okay, before, we, uh, before I pass it on, do you have any other questions for me? Um, Alberta? What is Alberta student number? I'm kind of confused on that. Yeah, so at the top of your report card, uh, there is an Alberta student number, or sometimes it's called an ASN. Every student will have one. And if you don't know it, um, we can find it for you. So let me know if, um, if you can't find it on the top of your report card and we can get that number for you. Mrs. Thomas, can, yeah. Mrs. Thomas. Can I just speak to that? Doha, yep. um, your report card has your Alberta student number and your Qatar ID. They're both on the report card. So tomorrow, we'll give you guys some time before 12.30 to pull out a copy of your report card so you have both those numbers ready. Okay? And if you don't, if you don't, if you can't find your report card, uh, myself and Ms. Hegde have copies of those uh, two identification numbers, okay? Okay. Okay, so I will pass this over to Ms. Sophia and Mr. Katie, and they can share with you some of the details um, about the options courses. I will just unshare my screen. Ryan, you have a question? What if we aren't taking Blythe for grade seven? Then don't worry about it, Ryan. I know you won't be here next year for grade seven, so no need to worry about it. Okay, you won't have to attend. Awesome. Uh, Miss Selena, do you want to give me the right to share my screen? Yes, I will. One moment. Hello, grade sixes. So while Selena's doing that, uh, for those that don't know us, uh, my name is Miss Sophia and this is Mr. Kaylee. 
and we're going to talk to you guys about options. Uh, the first option we're going to talk to you guys about is actually drama and music. So, all right, we're going to let Miss Marlowe, who is our music and drama teacher, speak to you guys a little bit first about the music and drama options. Go ahead, Miss Marlowe. Right. Good morning, Grade Six. How are we today? Good. Good. OK, so music and drama. So I'm going to talk about both of them because I'm both the music and the drama teacher. So. What you somebody asked before, can you take the same uh, subject twice um, and you can't take the same subject twice? But what happens uh, is because I teach both music and drama, what I like to do is get an idea of the options that people have more interest in. So what you can do is you can take music. If music is offered first semester, you can take music first semester and then second semester you can take drama. And if you're, you know, uber talented or you have a real desire to do uh, some singing when we're doing drama, you can incorporate some of the music into the drama and vice versa. Um, so the course can be a little bit flexible. Um, I think what I'm actually going to do uh, this year is start with drama in semester one uh, so that that leads up to a production for uh, December and then music in the second semester and then we can have a spring concert. So around May, I'm looking around May. So how do options work? Well, with music, um, if you play an instrument or if you sing, that would be your one of your focuses. So if you don't sing uh, or you don't like to sing, we can look at you playing an instrument instead. And when you do the music option, you there will be a choir and there will be an orchestra. So um, the, the orchestra, as we can see here, if you play an instrument, you'll be doing some performances. And generally the music options, the people in music options will accompany uh, any of the productions that we have uh, and also any of the assemblies that we do. Um, so I don't know if some of you remember last year, but when we had the peace assembly, the people that were singing the, the songs were the, the, the students in junior high who had chose music as an option. Um, and then what we do in lessons is we learn about general music, so different areas of music, a little bit like what we do now in music, but we explore it in more depth and we we play more of the instruments and we look at blending that music theory in with the practical um, elements of, of performing, performing the music on on instrumentation. So how is drama different? Like what is the differences? So drama leads to the stage production. So you can see some of our past students there. So the focus we will either do in musical theatre production, like The Tempest was last year, uh, which most of you um, performed uh, the, the songs for The Tempest. Um, and if you remember, the actors were up on the stage and they were the ones that were delivering the, the script. So um, what I like to do is incorporate the senior high drama and the junior high drama so that they can get some of the roles together. And the focus with drama is not just on performing and acting, but also if you have a desire for uh, writing. So I don't know if you guys remember, but when we did The Lion King last year, we had Sevda and Precious were, were writing a scene, an additional scene. So we, we do a lot of that in drama where, um, you know, if people don't want to stand up on stage as much, and they want to take more of a backstage role, uh, you can focus on, on writing some of the scenes or the stage production. Uh, and if you've got any questions about them, I can ask us, I, I can answer some of the questions about the stage production roles. Um, also, what I want to do this year with drama is also put a, a focus on business. 
because there's a business side. So uh, the marketing, the media, getting things together, creating tickets um, and how we kind of put a production together. So there's lots of little parts that go together. Um, and if you choose drama, you will be involved in the productions and any of the read aloud days. So um, I got some of my senior high drama students this year to uh, read out some stories that were read to classes in um, primary and elementary. Um, so you will you'll also get to do that, which is a little different than just standing on the stage. So why choose music and drama? Well, for a start, it's fun. And you know you get to be a little bit goofy and silly. Um, it does help you focus, and it increases your control and your discipline with your other subjects, um, because you you become more focused on your performance and how to work together collaboratively. Um, so it's not just all about you. Uh, you do get to shine though, and uh, maybe one day you'll be famous, but you'll certainly be a star of Blythe. Um, but at the same time, so you get to learn, create, have fun, have a laugh, and you'll get to perform with some of your friends in some of the other years because drama options is seven, eight and nine. So um, it's, it's quite nice. Some of you will get to work with maybe with Precious again, like you were here, Maya and Sidra. Um, and lastly, the most important reason to choose it, when your parents watch you perform, they will cry and then they will give you a treat. And that's what you want. So do we have any questions? How many uh, drama or drama production are we going to do? Every week? So there'll be four lessons a week of 45 minute lessons. So that's how much drama you'll get a week. I know I've got some great dancers and gymnasts too, so we can incorporate some of that like we had last year. Any other questions? No? Okay, right. Thank you very much for your time and for listening and have a wonderful day. All right, grade sixes. So Miss Fia is just going to share her screen now. Uh, Miss Marlowe talked about drama and music, which are two options um, that you guys currently take now. When you enter junior high, uh, we have some brand new options that we are offering to you guys for next year. So Miss Fia and I are going to talk about them a little bit. Uh, let us finish talking about the whole option, and then we'll let you guys ask questions about them at the end, OK? So these are some really fun, new, creative options that Blythe is offering next year. So we're going to start with business, and Miss Sophia is going to talk to you a little bit, little bit about what business is going to look like. So business is a super cool new option that we're offering uh, at the junior high level. So with business, uh, you're going to be ex exploring different aspects of well business. So you're going to be looking at things like personal business, um, investing. You're going to be looking at if you ever wanted to run a business one day in your life, some of the things that go along with running a business, how to be a manager, uh, how to look at finances, how to look at uh, accounting management, things like that, uh, that build you into a leader and a manager within the business world and giving you a sense of what business is and what what kind of things you can do with a career in business. So this is a project based course. Uh, it's going to be mostly projects and working towards goals and things like that. And it's going to be a super fun, super cool course. So yeah, with business, you guys will have a little project and the goal would be for you to actually get a business up and running here at Blythe. So you'll be able to sell a product, make a product and distribute it to the students. So if you guys have an interest in that, uh, this would be the option for you. If you're really good at working with other people, this would be an option, awesome option for you. Business is super collaborative. Um, so yeah, if that interests you, business would be the way to go. So does anyone have any questions about what business might be or might look like? You should do business to that Sorry, Sorry you, you just need that? to repeat that a little bit louder. Uh, 
Clotilde, was, was that you that, that said that? We couldn't quite hear it. Whoever spoke last. All right, well, we'll just go down the list end of questions. So Luna, what's your question? Okay, so um, what are we basically gonna do in business? Like, what are the baselines? So with business, your goal is going to be to create an actual business. So you're going to have an idea as your group and you're going to see it from the idea stage inside your head to actually giving it to the other students here at life. So you'll work in teams collaboratively, make a product, sell a product and look at each step of that. Because there's a lot of different steps from idea to actually getting a product out there. So you're going to be doing that on a really small scale inside the classroom. Okay, thank you. Ryan, what's up? What if we do end up having grade seven online next year? So of course, like Ms. Uh, Thomas said, our hope is that all of you are in next year and we get to see your smiling faces every single day. These options, um, we have backup plans for what it will look like when they're done online and they're still gonna be fun and engaging, but we are hoping that all of you will be in. So we're hoping that you pick your options based on the fact that you guys will all be in person. Okay. Let's see, go ahead. So, can you hear me? Yeah. So, how many times we have business by each week? So, all options uh, across the school will be offered twice per week for 45 minutes each. So you'll take options four times a week, but two days will be business and two days will be whatever else you take. Okay? So you'll get options four times a week, but Monday and Wednesday will be business and Tuesday and whatever other day will be your other option. Does that make sense? Yes, thanks. All right, so the next option that you guys can choose in going into grade seven is art, and that will be taught by Miss Mala. So Miss Mala teaches the fundamentals of art. So you get to explore different aspects of art. There are so many different types of art in our world, and Miss Mala has chosen some really good ones um, for you guys to investigate. So she said it's 70% practical, which means hands on where you're actually creating art and 30% theory where you learn how art has developed um, from like the past to what we consider art now. So if you are an artist or an aspiring artist or just like to draw or paint, this would be the option for you. It's gonna look a lot like what you're doing right now in grade six, just on a little bit more advanced scale because you guys will be entering junior high. Do we have any questions about art? All right, so foods is a completely new option here at Blythe. We are going to have a full kitchen um, where you guys get to go and every single day you will get to walk out with a treat or a, or a meal that you've made. So you'll go through, you'll learn uh, baking, you'll learn how to like cook the things that your parents learn, traditional foods. Uh, and every day you'll do an, a new recipe and you'll walk through the steps on how you read a recipe and how you implement that and then a final product. And at the end, you'll get to walk away with that to actually eat. Okay, so it can be your lunch. Uh, you'll actually get to make your own in foods. And the best thing is you'll be able to take that recipe home and recreate it for your family, for your friends, for grandma and grandpa. Uh, and they'll be super, super excited that you actually know how to cook um food and no it's not going to be like microwavable dinners that we're all just staring at cooking we have a full oven you'll get to learn how to go from nothing to an actual product okay so it's a full kitchen that you guys will be working in you work in teams and each of you take on a different role when creating these meals does that make sense to everyone do we have any questions about foods Go ahead, 
Okay, so this might be a little bit tricky because um, I have celiac. So would you do gluten-free options when the cooking if I brought my own flour and stuff? So you wouldn't need to bring your own flour. If you choose to take foods, um, you make food that works for you. So any recipe that the other kids are making, uh, we can adjust it to fit your needs. Thank you. Yeah. Joelle, go ahead. Okay, so are we going to be um, bringing our own ingredients from home or are they already going to be in the kitchen? So the school provides the ingredients for the recipes that you make. If you take foods, you have to just walk yourself into the kitchen and everything that you need is there and you'll learn how to use everything that's there in order to make the food. So you don't need to bring your own from home, nothing like that. It will all be there for you to use at the school. Okay, and also, are we going, is a teacher going to be using the oven for us because it's kind of like dangerous? No, so in foods, you learn how to use those things safely. So the first thing you'll walk into is safety and how we use each item. Obviously, there will be a teacher there to help you and work with you. Um, but the, the goal of foods is so that you become confident in the kitchen. So there's a ton of safety involved in that. And you'll learn all of that before you start using the things. OK, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions on what foods would look like? Uh, questions about what you make, anything like that? Go ahead, Sidra. Um, what if like, um, would it be such thing as like, would a room get too full? Like for example, what if too many people joined foods? Would some people not be able to join or could everyone join? So at this point, all you got to worry about is picking the options you want. If for some reason an option got full uh, and you didn't make it into that option, we would message you and be like, hey, this is what's up. You got to pick another option, but we'll get you into the option you wanted in a different semester. Yeah, we're going to try our best since lots of these options are new to get you guys into the ones that you want. So don't worry about that part. That's our job. Um, just pick the ones that you really want to take, okay? Novera, what's up? Um, so basically, what if we have online school? How are we going to adjust to that? Because I don't know, like, are we going to cook from home or something? If so we again, have online school next year? So again, there is a plan for foods online. Um, you guys will still be making things, uh, so don't don't worry about that. But again, the goal is to have you all in. So pick with that in mind. But if we are online, unfortunately, there will be a plan rolled out and it will be still exciting and new and something for you guys to do besides your core classes. What types of cultural food will be will we be, be will we be making um, traditional foods from all over the world or base basing it on a specific country? So um, there is a unit just like you have a unit in math. There's units in foods and one of them is international slash traditional foods. So depending on who's in the class, we will base that on which foods we pick from which areas, from which cultures, and you guys will have input in that because all of you are from different places around the world. So it'll be super exciting for you to bring in recipes, bring in ideas, and then have the rest of your class cook and use those ideas. Does that make sense? Yes. Joelle, did you have another question? Yeah, I have two more questions. The first one is who's going to be the teacher? That's going to be me. So I am teaching foods uh, next year for junior high and senior high. OK, and also my second question, are we going to be doing any challenges? like cooking challenges where you guys like judge or is that not going to be happening? Yeah, so some of your units, like instead of having a final exam in math, you are going to have almost like a mini competition. So if you guys watch any of the cooking shows or your parents watch them like Chop, Iron Chef, like the Bobby Flay stuff, you guys will have mini challenges like that too in foods once you've gotten used to working in the kitchen. Does that answer your okay, question? Thanks. Cool. Anything else before we move on to the next option? All right, sweet. 
So sports performance is brand new as well. So sports performance is a great, great course uh, if you enjoy phys ed currently, uh, or you really like being active, or you are currently an athlete, or you would like to become a more advanced athlete. Uh, we highly recommend this course, especially if you are wanting to be on any of Life Academy sports teams next year. And again, this is with um, in-person learning in mind. Uh, this class is a great opportunity to advance your own personal skills in a variety of sports and fitness endeavors. So in phys ed, for example, we, we look at generally, okay, how do we do these skills in a sport like, for example, soccer? In sports performance, you would look at that same sport, but we'd be looking at a more advanced level. Uh, so some more specific skills that you might not touch on in phys ed, but if you're looking to really advance your skills uh, or really, really enjoy being active and want to develop your skills, uh, sports performance is a great option for you. Yeah, the biggest thing, if you love phys ed right now and you wish you had phys ed every day, all day, this would be a great option for you. You'll become those high performance athletes in a lot of different sports, so your body of knowledge will grow. And like Miss Sophia said, if you want to be on a Life Academy sports team next year, this would be a great, great option for you because it would be extra practice time. Okay, so this is again new. Uh, we don't know who exactly is going to be teaching sports performance. Uh, but it's a great course to get you more active, more involved in sports and uh, fitness and athletics in general. Do we have any questions about sports performance? Uh, yes. Uh, is there any type of martial arts sports? So the specific sports will be teacher specific. If the teacher knows about martial arts and how to teach that, that can be an option in there for sure. Um, but as we don't know who's teaching it yet, Think more general athletics. Think those. Okay, like sports. soccer or something? Yeah, soccer, volleyball, basketball, swimming potentially, uh, football, American football. Yeah. yeah. Basketball, baseball, softball. Cricket, softball. Okay, thank you. General sports. Any other questions about sports performance? All right. uh, if we're doing swimming, uh, will the how will the pool be provided, and if we're online? Again, we're we're not basing this. If you guys are online, you are going to be here in person because that's our hope, right? Um, obviously, we don't have a pool at the school. If swimming is involved, you you go to somewhere with a pool. All right. So MDC. Uh, is a brand new option uh, that you guys haven't got like a few of the others. This is media design and communication. So this is working with computers. So if you have a knack for technology and you love uh, the tech side of school, this would be a great, great, great option for you. You learn how to design websites, um, market businesses, use technology to enhance your learning in school and at home. So for those of you that were here last year, you would have taken CTS with Mr. Fred. Um, so MDC is CTS. It's the same thing. We just took the name and we changed it. Um, and we made it a little bit more specific uh, so that you could really enhance your technology skills uh, and learn a variety of different areas of technology. So if you guys have an interest in technology and learning how to design and create and use technology in a more advanced way, this would be a great course for you to take, right? And again, you pick four options. So if you like a lot of these that you're hearing so far, that's great. You need to pick four, just keep that in mind. So if you like technology, I might take MDC as one of those four to start working with computers and creating with technology. Do we have any questions about MDC? Are we going to be working with uh, CMD or Linux? Uh, possibly, yes. Uh, you'll be using a variety of different technology platforms. Okay. Any other questions around MDC? Yeah. Are we going to use Windows or Mac? 
Windows. You're going to be using Windows, I believe. Right. Yes, I believe it'll be Windows. However, if you have a Mac, like you, you will be bringing in your own computer to school in uh, in grade seven, and that's that's actually something that I think that we we might have missed saying is that uh, as you enter junior high, the expectation changes, so you need to bring in a device every single day to school. Uh, so if you have a Windows, fantastic. If you have a Mac, fantastic. Whatever you have, the course will be tailored towards um, helping you uh, learn how to use technology according to the device you have. But again, you'll be using your computer or tablet that you bring to school every day for all of your classes. Your core class, you're going to use it in math, you're going to use it in English, you're going to use it in social, in science, and your options. So whatever device you have, we will make sure that you learn how to use that. Good question. OK, so Arabic um, is going to be an option for next year. If you are currently taking Arabic as a mandatory class, you will continue to take Arabic. This is an optional Arabic class for those students who would like to learn Arabic that are not taking it in school. OK, so if you're not in that mandatory Arabic class, you can take it um, and learn Arabic. So for example, if I was in school going into junior high, I wouldn't be taking mandatory Arabic, but I might want to learn it. So I would enroll in this and be able to start learning Arabic. Does that make sense? Any questions? For the languages, if you already are in Arabic, you still have to take it. You don't need to click Arabic as one of your four options, okay? And if you're already in French, you don't need to click French. This is extra Arabic, okay? This is for students wanting to learn outside of the language courses they already take. Uh, yeah, Abdul Rahman, go ahead. Okay, so for the lesson that for the classes that we have right now, so in grade seven, are the teachers going to change? For example, for Arabic and French and Islamic, will the teachers change or? Possibly, yes. Yeah, new teachers all around. Ahmed, go ahead. Is it possible that we'll not get any of our options that we chose ever? No, you will get the some of the options that you pick again. Pick the ones that you want. It's our jobs to make sure that you get into those options as best we can. Okay. Okay. All right, this is the same thing as Arabic, except it's French. This is an extra French class. So if you're already taking French as a language, you don't need to pick French as one of your extra courses. This is more for students that are in mandatory Arabic that would also like to learn French. Okay, so if you're wanting to take that, if you're in an Arabic class right now and you want to take French, you would have to use one of your options to take those languages. Same thing as Arabic, except it's for French. Does that make sense? I'm seeing some head nods at the cameras that are on. Awesome. Any questions? No, I see some thumbs up. All right. So that are those are all of the options that you have for next year. OK, tomorrow you are going to pick just like Miss Lori or Miss Thomas's sorry presentation uh, set. So at 1230 you are going to pick. We will walk you through how to do that. Tonight, your job is to talk with mom or dad or both and figure out which options you are interested in and which options they think you should take and then come tomorrow with four that you are going to choose. Yes, Abdurrahman. Can I choose three options because I don't have, I don't, uh... No, you need to pick four options, two first semester, two second semester. OK. Do we have any other questions? Do we have any other questions about just going into grade seven? It can be about anything. Yeah, go ahead. 
Uh, Jad. How hard is it going to be? How hard is it going to be? I love the question. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, grade seven will be a little bit harder than grade six, just like grade six was a little bit harder than grade five. Okay, but the teachers are still there to support you. It's not like you just get handed random big unit tests every day, right? It's not this scary thing that you guys are going into. It's the same sort of system. You learn, you take notes, you do uh, projects and presentations. Then you have your exams. The only little difference is your exams might be worth a little bit more. And Miss Selena uh, and Miss Hagney can talk to you about that if they've seen a lot of grade sixes go into grade seven. Any other questions for grade sixes? Oh, go ahead. Um, will we get will we get to choose different courses? Um, after grade seven, will we get to choose different courses for each year or will it be the same all until we go to grade No, so your options can change every year. So let's say you take um, art, business, MDC and foods and you feel like, okay, I only liked two of those. You can take those two again in grade eight and then pick two new options for grade eight as well. So it, your option classes can change every year but you will be taking science, math, social, English, phys ed, and your language until grade nine. Chad, do you have another question? Yeah, um, is every year gonna have their own different choices or will there be all the same choices? There'll be the same choices. However, the, the course that you take in grade seven, so let's say you take food seven, what you learn in food seven is going to be different than what you would learn in foods eight and that would be different than what you learn in foods nine so it's not like if i take you to grade seven and grade eight i'm going to be taking the same course twice it's not like that every year just like how in science in grade six you've learned something in science and in grade seven you're going to learn something different in science and then grade eight is going to be something different it's the same thing with your options every year you get to learn something different and more advanced Abdullah, what's up? Um, what is the website we're gonna uh, select our um, classes on? So it's called PowerSchool. You guys haven't selected courses through PowerSchool uh, as of yet, but we will be here to help you walk through step by step by step. So we'll send you the link tomorrow, make sure everyone gets on. Then we'll do the next step, the next step until you've all submitted your options successfully. Okay, so there's going to be a link that we just uh, yeah. go to. Yeah, okay. A teams meeting with us. So just like this, we'll be on a Teams meeting like this, and together we'll select your courses. Quotid. So can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so can, can we like, can we choose like two sources for the first half of the year? and take the same sources for the other of? No, you cannot. So you need to pick four different options courses. They cannot be the same. Okay. Uh, Sidra. Um, what grade do you have to be to start biology? So in science seven, you learn a little bit about biology, a little bit about chemistry, and a little bit about physics. You don't take pure biology until high school. Okay. Uh, Doha. Will we choose which course we will take for the semester? No, so you're going to pick the four courses you want to take at some point during the year. And then depending on scheduling uh, is when they'll go either first semester or second semester. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, Chad. Okay, so do we, in our four uh, choices of um, what are we going to do, do we choose which two are we going in each semester or is it randomized? No, you, you don't. So you just pick the four you want to take and we'll take care of the rest. Any other questions, grade sixes? Uh, Miss Seth? 
I think now they've been at it here for about an hour um, and they've got French and Arabic coming up in about 10 minutes. So can we maybe try and wrap it up, boys and girls? If you don't have any more questions, you can ask us and we will send it along to one of the junior high teachers or Mrs. Thomas. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. So grade six is at this point. If you have any other questions, uh, you can message uh, Ms. Lena or Ms. Hegde and they will pass it on, or you can use Teams and message us because uh, we're all connected through Teams now. So think about your options, talk to your parents and come ready with your four choices for tomorrow, okay? All right. All right. Bye, great sixes. Thank you guys Thank for listening. You. See you guys Bye. tomorrow Bye. to pick Bye. options. Thank you.